um, uh, what uniform continuity is, is, is demanding of us. It's demanding the same delta work for every epsilon. Okay, so what's the big deal here? Let's, um, let me show you some, some uh, facts about, some things we can say about uh, functions that are, uh, when functions are uniformly continuous. So here's a, our first theorem, uh, one of the most important theorems about continuity, and that is if you have a continuous function uh, uh, and on a compact set, then in fact f is uniformly continuous on x. So what it's saying is this example, it's, it's sort of pointing out how you could uh, uh, what sort of uh, uh, where the problem is in this example? It's it's bringing up the fact that ah, if you know if this domain had been compact, I would have been in good shape. For instance, if this domain had stopped right before it got to the asymptote, then I'd still be okay, wouldn't I? Why? If I'd stopped this domain right here. What delta would work for every point? The delta that worked at this end point, right? That would work everywhere to the left. So um, this sort of gives a hint as to what's going on with this theorem. Very, very important theorem. Now, wh why, why is this such an important theorem? Why do we care about uniform continuity? Well, uniform continuity basically says that, uh, well, if the same delta works for every epsilon. It just means that, look, for any target distance you name, I can tell you how close you have to be to land within epsilon. It doesn't matter where I'm at. Okay. And this theorem is saying, guess what? I have uniform continuity whenever I have continuity on a compact set. Okay, so let's prove this fact. Let's prove this fact. How could I prove this fact? Let's, let's see if we can develop an intuition for why it's true. So um, how is compactness going to help me here? Any ideas? Let's draw another picture here. And let's imagine that we have a compact set. Although this, I wanna, want you to realize, x didn't have to be just a subset of the real line. It could be a subset of any metric space, right? Could be two-dimensional, three-dimensional, infinite dimensional, doesn't matter. But let's just look at a picture like this. Okay, so um, here's a compact set in the real line. And I have a function that's defined on it that's continuous. Help. What delta is going to work for every epsilon? You give me an epsilon ball. What delta is going to work for every epsilon? OK, maybe that's not around a point that's so here. Let's look at some sample points. Here's a point, and here's its image. Here's a delta ball around it. Okay. Here is a point, and here's its image. Lands in here. There's a delta ball, uh, an epsilon ball around it. So let's see. This delta ball is kind of tiny. This delta ball is kind of big. And, you know, I'll go over a few other places. I, I could find some delta balls that would keep things with an epsilon as well, right? Here, maybe this one works. Now, lots of different deltas. What delta is going to work for every epsilon, for a given epsilon, for every point? The smallest one. Is there a smallest one? Not necessarily. Um, 
I mean, there wasn't a smallest here. These got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you went to the right, those the, the, the requisite delta balls. This function, okay, I agree. This function's continuous. Is that going to be helpful to us? It achieves its maximum minimum. I'm, I'm actually interested in how big these delta balls are. How do I know these are never not going to get just smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller somewhere? Willie? The point at which the slope is greatest. Yeah, okay. There's your intuition is good there. Okay, hold that thought. Let me just address Willie's thought. So, so Willie, you're noticing that if this function had a derivative, which <laughs> we haven't defined yet, and which this function may not necessarily, since we only required it be continuous, but if you could talk about slopes and stuff, it certainly would make sense that the slope, where the slope is the biggest, perhaps, is where the delta would be the smallest. And this thing you're claiming maybe has a you just go to the place where the slope is the biggest, if there is such a place. And there isn't one here, but there happens to be one here on the compact set. OK, that's certainly a very good intuition. It shouldn't surprise us because, in fact, this is saying close, close, right? This is run, that's rise. Rise over run, if we could define it, would certainly be related to this concept. But unfortunately, f is just continuous, and we don't know anything about derivatives yet, OK? But good intuition. Yes, uh, Jenny. Uh huh. The cube root of x. Oh yeah, yeah. Although that. Um, uh, um, uh, that is not right, right, that's right, I see what you're saying, yes. So in fact, yeah, so you, the cube root of x, so your, your picture was something like this, right? Yeah, and so even here, the, the idea of an infinite slope might be, the, the idea that there is a maximum slope is a problematic one, right? Okay. But, but it, is a, it is a good intuition that somehow this is re the, 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 the slope is related to this, uh, this ratio. Okay? But yes, there are problems with this idea. OK, but we're not even going to talk about slopes for another lecture or so. OK. OK, so let's come back to, so what's the other idea? Well, let's see, delta balls. Would you agree there's a delta ball around every point? Ooh, interesting. Make a function that maps each point to the delta ball around it. That's kind of your idea. And then hopefully that's continuous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's not, it's not such an easy um, direction to go. But uh, again, the intuition is, is helpful. So you're going to see ingredients of all these ideas coming up real soon here. But uh, let me just point out, there are many, many ways to prove this, this theorem. And uh, the book does one way, and I'm going to do another. Okay? But the book's argument goes something like this. And you'll, you'll begin to see the, the, the idea here. Every point has a delta ball associated with it, yes? Yes? Those delta balls form a cover, an open cover of this of this set, which is compact. Therefore, there is a finite subcover. OK, and so then what? If you have the delta balls that cover, does that guarantee anything about? No. So there you have to be a little careful. 